Hey, what's going on? My name is Steve Kinney. I'm an engineer and a producer. Thanks for joining me in this series where we cover Luna from top to bottom, front to back, getting your session started all the way to export at the end. Now in this video, we're gonna be diving deeper into the MIDI workflows and using MIDI inside of Luna. Timestamps are available in the description below, so feel free to jump around if you'd like. All I ask is that you hit the like button, leave a comment below, let me know that you were here, and uh, hit the subscribe button for more. All right, let's dive right into it. All right, so the first things first, we're gonna to wanna to be in the MIDI workflow. So let's go up to the workflow panel here and choose MIDI workflow. Now in Luna, there is no piano roll page. Everything is just in the timeline. So the rest of the tools are gonna to be found in the timeline on the clip of the MIDI track. Now I've already got some MIDI via the drums, but I wanna add another instrument. So to create our new track, what we'll do is go up to the top left-hand corner and hit the plus button. And from there, we can choose instrument. Alternatively, you could hit Command, Shift, and I, and that will give you the option to create a new track via that shortcut, but let's just do it the long way around. So from here, we'll give our instrument a name. Uh, for this track, I think I'm just gonna do a super simple piano sound in the background over top of the chorus. And I can also choose my instrument from here. I can choose Ravel, or I could choose uh, any one of the different instruments in your library, but for now, let's just stick with shape and I'll hit okay. Cool, so now this is the instrument view of shape and shape is really cool because it comes with a ton of different sounds and a lot of them are really inspiring, especially in the drum kits. The drums and the percussion kits that are included with shape are absolutely phenomenal. So for now, I'm just gonna stick to the default Ravel light uh, preset that comes loaded whenever you load up shape. I think it sounds nice. Um, simple, and it's certainly gonna suit what I'm gonna do to the rest of this track. So if you've already got a clip that you wanna work with from another project and you just wanna import it, feel free to drag and drop into the timeline. Alternatively, you could also import by going up to File, Import, and then you would just choose whichever file that you're working with. Now, since we're actually gonna be adding to this, we're gonna really be performing for this track, there's a few things that you're gonna to wanna to know if you're playing MIDI into your project. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to know is in your track itself, you have the ability to choose what MIDI input that you have. So from here, I could choose all, or I could choose a very specific instrument. So in this case, I could choose the LPK25, which is just this desk instrument. And that's pretty cool because if I had something like the larger piano behind me and someone else was playing, I could assign that to a different plugin entirely. That way, nothing that they do over there interrupts what I'm doing over here. Pretty cool. Next, it's really important that you have arm mode turned on and you also have arm mode turned on on the track. So this makes sure that your track is gonna have lower latencies. So we'll go ahead and choose the input monitoring and then arm it and we can confirm in our mixer that ARM is enabled. And that's the advanced real-time monitoring that Luna provides with the Apollo interface. Okay, so now that we have our track ready and it's armed, we've got lower latency, we're ready to perform. So let's jump back into the timeline and we'll go to this chorus section and I'll just lay down something super simple over top of it. So we'll go function command space Now that we've got our performance recorded, now let's jump into the interface and kind of go over all of the different sections of working with MIDI. Earlier I said that everything happens inside of the timeline and that's certainly the case here. So let's go over a couple things here. The most important thing to know is that on the MIDI track itself, under the view subheader, you'll see where it says notes. If I choose clips, now I won't be able to edit any of these MIDI notes, right? So if I wanted to change a note, maybe I wanted to quantize it, we're gonna wanna make sure that under our view that we have notes selected. Now I can move a note around, I can do whatever I want there. So 
The key takeaway here is the clips view is non-editable and the notes view is the piano roll where you can edit your notes. And one really important shortcut that you're gonna wanna remember is just simply the minus key. If I press the minus key, that toggles between the notes view and the clips view. So when you're finally done working with your MIDI track, you just press the minus key and now you're ready to move on and you know that you're not gonna accidentally move a note if you're doing something. Next, you'll notice that this piano roll isn't exactly the entire 88 keys that you'd find on a piano roll. Now that's because everything in Luna is very contextual and the piano roll is no different. So whenever you record a performance, it's gonna to default to collapsing that piano roll down to only the notes that are in that performance. Now, if you wanna expand the piano roll so that you see the entirety of the piano roll, what you can do is come over here just to where you see these keys uh, in the tracks view, and then just grab one of the handles here and expand it. And if you wanna collapse it back down, just underneath is the fit button. So you click that and it collapses it back down to fitting only the notes within the uh, performed section. And finally, one more view pro tip is that if you click the fold button, what happens is, is it condenses the MIDI notes down even further and it collapses it down to only the notes that are used in general. So if I click this, you can see that all of these notes are condensed to just those notes that are used in the performance. Now this is really useful in situations like step sequencing, if you're creating drum beats, uh, it's very useful for that. This way you can compare timing a lot easier between the notes relative to one another since they're closer together. So now let's talk about editing. So an important thing to note about quantizing inside of Luna is that it's non-destructive. So if I go up to the top of this piano clip, there's a little Q button and if I click it, over in the left hand side of the screen, I have the ability to change quantize grids as well as swing and strength. So I could choose 30 second notes and you'll see that the grid changes or I could choose half notes and you'll see that the grid changes or I could turn quantize off and it'll just revert back to the original performance. Additionally, a shortcut for quantizing is command shift U. Now one thing that I really love about working with MIDI inside of Luna is that you can also have different track versions just like audio. So now you can create MIDI comps inside of Luna, which I think is absolutely really cool. But to do that, of course, you would just go to the same place you would for an audio track. You just click add a new version and you can see that it's now ready waiting for our next performance. But for now, we're just gonna work with uh, version one. Couple quick shortcuts here. If you have some of your MIDI notes selected, pressing up and down changes the note by a semitone. Holding shift up and down changes the note by an octave. So for example, I press up, moves it one note. If I press down, moves it back one note. If I hold shift and press up, that just moves it a whole octave. Notes can be moved by dragging, which is pretty straightforward, very simple to do, and they can also be extended by grabbing the handle at the end of the note. You'll see that, again, with contextual editing inside of Luna, it knows exactly what you're doing as you're going to do it, so pretty cool. If you have snap turned on, a shift plus and minus will change the grid sizes, so if we were to zoom in here, you can see that if I hold shift and press up, that I'm going up by a quarter note, now I'm at a half, now I'm at just one beat, and I can go down into sixteenths, thirty seconds, and so on and so forth. If you want to toggle snap on and off, what you could do is press shift backslash, and that'll turn snap off. Alternatively, you could just go up to the top here and click. If I wanted to move some of these notes over by just a little bit, I could click and drag, Or if I wanted to make it so they're not snapped to the grid, I could use that shortcut, shift backslash, and now I can click and drag a sample at a time. Alternatively, I could click and hold and then hold command down. So I'd click first to drag, hold command down, and then I can drag it out. And that temporarily bypasses the grid snap. If you wanna draw notes in, just hold the control button down and click anywhere and that will draw them in one at a time for each grid length. Alternatively, you could double click to make a new note. So I just double click. 
Now finally, I can change note velocity very easily. There's two ways that you can do it. The first way is going up to the top of the clip right next to the Q button. You'll see that there's this little velocity drop down panel. And if I click that, now you can see all the note velocities and the MIDI CC data that uh, is stored within each MIDI clip. And I can just drag one of the handles here and change the MIDI value there. Alternatively, if I hover over a note and hold command first, I can click it and then change it that way. And you can also see that the note transparency is changing within the clip. Now it's also important to note that the note velocity lane is also where you will find other MIDI data. So for example, over in this bottom left hand corner, I click on velocity and now I can see a whole bunch of other parameters that I could adjust on the fly if I wanted to. And this is where I would go to if I wanted to make any other adjustments to the MIDI instrument or any of the other parameters that I wanted to edit. All right, cool, so we've got our track quantized. I did some quick copying and pasting here of this data. So we've got an octave going and I've also got some extra little effects here. So let's just listen to this on its own. All right, we'll listen to this in context of the mix. All right, cool. So this, these two notes, I'm just gonna move them over so they hit the grid right. And I'm also going to change them to be a little softer along with these. Cool, let's listen to that back one more time. All right, cool, so there you have it. It's pretty easy to do. And I think it's very intuitive. I like the way that it's laid out. I like how it's in line with the timeline. And I think that this MIDI workflow really complements the way that you work inside of Luna. Now on that point, I also want to talk about the sounds that come with Luna. Uh, of course, there is shape and hidden inside of shape are some awesome percussion sounds. I mentioned that earlier. So I'm going to pull that up real quick so you guys can hear some of that. All right, cool. So I've got a new instance of shape pulled up here and we're just going to go to drums and down here they've got the ocean way kits uh, this is really cool nice and dry kind of kit and we got ocean way 16 Very cool. And then they've got these other 808 style. Very nice. Then of course they've also got other really creative things like timpani. Got claps and stomps. That's really fun to play with. So they've got a bunch of cool stuff just scattered throughout shape. It sounds really cool. They've got some Mellotron stuff. Gotta check it out, sounds great. So now that we've touched on the basics of working with MIDI inside of Luno, we're now ready for mixing. Now I have covered mixing already in an earlier video. So be sure to check out part four. In part four, I deep dive on setting up buses, routing, and a couple different mixing techniques that you can do inside of Luna that you can't do in other DAWs. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like, leave a comment below, let me know you were here, and also subscribe to my channel for more. If you'd like to work with me directly, just reach out to me on Instagram at thestevekinney. And to support the channel, go to stevekinney.com where you'll find the console classics and heritage classics packs. They're available now and they're awesome. They're really great at getting your session up and running. I appreciate any support you throw my way. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys on the next video.